Alright. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum hunain. This is actually like my 10th time recording this. Things just keep going wrong. But let's just delve right in. So after talking about the roadmap of Arabic and like how we're going to go about learning it in Mathaba, Sheikh spoke to us about the three types of words in Arabic. And there's three types. There's ism, fa'il, and harf. So a harf is known as a particle in English, and essentially it's a small word that impacts a noun. So when that comes, there's usually a noun following after it that can come directly after it, or there could be words in between, it could be further down, and you know that that harf, that small particle, is having an impact on that word. So one example is fi. When fi comes, there's automatically going to be a noun right after it, and it's going to force that noun to take a kasra, usually, right? So that's one way that's impacting the noun. Another example is inna. While inna can be followed by a noun that it impacts, there can also be multiple nouns in between. And you're just going to have to know that while inna is affecting that noun because it's taking a fatha. Right? That's the sign of inna, usually. I keep saying usually because for most rules in Arabic, there's an exception. It's just how it is, right? So the second thing is fa'il, which is a verb. And it's an action, right? So to jump, to run, to hit, to slide, all these things are actions that somebody is doing. It's important to keep in mind that all these actions are trapped in time. So usually you see verbs that are in a past tense, present tense, or future tense, or a command, right? They all have something to do with time. And when they're in seen in their default form, it's usually past tense, masculine, singular, right? So an example of that would be fa'ala. And then another example would be semi'a. So usually with verbs, the when it's in its default form, the first letter has a fatha and the last letter has a fatha. And the middle letter can change between fatha, kasra, and dhamma. That's not really important for you to know yet because Sheikh hasn't really covered it, but it's just so that you can identify it. And the third thing is an ism, which is usually translated as a noun, but it's far more than a noun. In English, a noun is a person, place, or thing. In Arabic, a noun is a person, place, thing, adjective, adverb, pronoun. It's pretty much everything that's not a verb and a particle. So anything that doesn't fall under verb and particle will automatically become an ism. So an ism is like a super noun. So just to review, in Arabic there are three types of words. There's ism, which is a super noun. There's fa'il, which is a verb, like an action. And then there's harf, which is a particle. Uh, and that's a small word that impacts a noun, whether it's coming directly after it or there could be multiple words in between. So that's all Sheikh covered in that part of the lesson. Alright, salamu alaikum.